Hello, friends. Good morning. And uh, we're going to go through this uh, lecture today. I think a lot of people have uh, been waiting for this. Uh, it's called Challenges in Ultrasonography for Regional Blocks in the Vs. Let's play it, the video. Uh, so um, this is uh, perioperative management of the B surgical patient. Uh, the guidelines which came out uh, from the AGBI and Royal College of Anesthetists. And most important uh, thing in this was this aspect number eight, uh, which says regional anesthesia is recommended as desirable, but is often technically difficult and maybe impossible to achieve. Now that's impossible to achieve that's what's my job uh, for today is to actually make impossible to possible unable to able okay so how you can actually achieve uh, the regional anesthesia uh, adequate regional anesthesia uh, in these patients uh, there are obviously things we would like need for it uh, we need to have good machines uh, i am actually concentrating on ultrasound um, but the same principles do apply to uh, PNS as well. Uh, you would need appropriate probes if you're using the ultrasound machine. Uh, you should be able to look at uh, deeper structures. So either you actually have a frequency linear probe, which has a frequency of five to 10 megahertz, and, uh, or you can even have to use uh, collinear probes uh, in my experience, you can get away with just linear probes in most cases if you apply the approaches I'm going to talk about. Uh, you need uh, high visibility needles, uh, and uh, this is important because you might actually have to go deeper, and uh, you don't need very long needles for these patients as long as you actually have around the uh, a 10 centimeter needle, uh, that is more than enough uh, for most patients. Very rarely you would actually need a much longer needles. And uh, you can actually see that that was a very thin patient. This is a, a patient who is obese. Look at the way the needle is approaching. Uh, this is another block. And uh, so the angle uh, you actually ha uh, look at is very shallow. You know, the needle is almost... Uh, parallel to the probe. So you actually see it uh, quite well. You can actually also see reverberation artifact here. And uh, in the thin patient, you can get away and don't need a, a sonoplex needle or high visibility needles. But if you look at uh, the patients, obese patients, look at the amount of fat and that angle we go in. Now, if you were to use a normal needle, that is, a, a, which is not like a sonoplex or high visibility needle, if this angle is more than 60 degrees, uh, the uh, you would actually not see it. You would need to use a lot of different tricks to actually see it because the what happens is the beam hits it and they go away. They, you're not able to collect the back of the beams. So you will not be able to see uh, the needle. Again, showing the same thing, the increased angle. So we're going to now share some uh, trip, uh, trick and trips or tips and tricks. Uh, how to actually improve. Now, uh, fat can be both a devil and an angel for us. Uh, yes, it can be difficult, but uh, what we want to do is actually make this devil into an angel. Uh, big body people likely have big hearts as well. They are lovely people. <laughs> so all we're going to talk about is a body fat complex. And uh, so if you were actually look at a scan of a patient now, that's the body of a patient now. The skeleton that is, is as a normal skeleton, is just a lot of amount of fat in the body. So the uh, fat body complex, and we can look at it. And uh, what it can do is this, what this girl is doing. It can do Bharatanatyam. Okay. I know you would be wondering, <laughs> what has Bharatanatyam got to do uh, with uh, morbidly obese patients? But we'll see it in a, in a minute. Okay. So if you look at the bad body, uh, bad, uh, body fat complex, it can actually move. It can move the, you know, just like that. 
and also fat can be actually fun okay he can look at the kid that is, he's enjoying and uh, everybody is actually laughing at him yeah he's poking poking at him and he's wondering what again uh, how can uh, fat be fun yes uh, fat people are funny <laughs> They are, uh, you know, happy-go-lucky kind of people. And uh, so let's uh, look at uh, what uh, makes it uh, so funny. Okay. So fat can be actually be squeezed. So you could actually see that the kid was actually poking at the fat. You can actually squeeze it, squash it, or squeeze it. Okay. And again, uh, you can, uh, fat does occupy space, and you can actually move the fat you can displace it uh, you can move it around uh, so coming to that let's see uh, now uh, how we can actually move on to the blocks okay so we'll start with the regional anesthesia uplink one of the only blocks uh, if you were to actually master any block uh, in upper limb uh, the block you want to know is is supraclavicular block okay so the commonest mistake is that you got a obese patient, you lie them there, and uh, there's no space. Where are you going to put the probe now? Whether you are going for interscaling or you're going for supraclavicular, where is the space? I mean, look at the, you cannot put the, the uh, you know, probe anywhere here. So how, how are you going to make, make this happen now? So... You can try all tricks. If you leave this patient in this position, you will never be able to actually get into that. The, the shoulder will come in the way. The clavicle will come in the way. The clavicle is almost touching uh, the mandible. Okay, so there's no space. So how do you create that space? So there's no place for the probe here. And it looks like this guy. You know, this guy trying to squeeze in this uh, DTC bus in Delhi. And that's what the probe is like. Trying to find space, it just can't find. What you want to do is just do like this. Create a space. You need to make your way through the crowd. Okay, move them out of the way. Able to just walk like uh, Modi is doing here. So for that, the uh, the best friend for an asset is, is this. This is the ramp. Okay. Let's see how it makes it possible. So if you actually have a ramp, this is what happens. Okay. You actually create a space between the your head and neck and the shoulders. I guess the what happens is the whole thing falls away uh, from that, creating a space, and that is what we're looking at. The other way to do is exactly have the patient sitting up. The advantage of ramp is that once the patient is in a normal position, the ramp is there. It also makes uh, you easy if you need to access the airway it can be cutting so you can actually leave the ramp uh, on for that but uh, same thing uh, sitting up the patient to around 45 degrees uh, also does the same thing it creates a space uh, uh, for you to place your probe or to feel your structure so if you're doing a even for if you're doing a pns guided block you want to need to feel the structures okay you will be able to do uh, by creating this space so you are actually now making it feel welcome. Uh, so Atiti Devo Bhava, okay, the probe can actually come in and you can actually do, do the block. It's also useful not only just for the supraclavicular block, but you can also do for the blocks below the clavicle, whether it's a retroclavicular block, infraclavicular block, you know, all kind of blocks. Even that actually creates space. And that's because this structure that is the your shoulder moves away just falls away from that and creates a space for you and so it's all about actually creating space uh, coming to the lower limb blocks okay the patients actually are huge yeah, it is difficult to access that okay uh, so uh, let's say for example the commonest block we do are the femoral and sciatic blocks for the lower limb so for femoral block if you actually have you can actually see that the fat it's just overhanging the structure, the, the place where, where you would actually want to do the block, isn't it? It's just overhanging. Uh, this image is courtesy the uh, Google. It's not from any patient. It's courtesy Google. So we need a fat controller. You need uh, someone. So the, the people who actually have small kid will recognize this man who is called a fat control, Thomas and Friends. 
and this is called a fat controller. So you need somebody to actually do that for you. So you need an assistant who can actually pull away the fat uh, from the uh, structure. Okay. It's also important in, in the uh, patients, morbidly obese patients, sometimes you actually see a lot of muck there and you need to clean it properly. I mean, it can be dirty area. So uh, clean it nicely, do two or three nice deep cleans in that area before uh, you put a needle in. So this is a, a video of a patient uh, who is uh, actually nice, thin and lean, lean okay. And uh, you can actually see that's the little side, and uh, that's the medial side. You can see the artery pulsating here. Okay, so that's the uh, fat. That is your femoral nerve. And look at the needle. Needle is actually coming at a very shallow. They look at the angle. So it's almost uh, parallel uh, to the probe. And uh, you can actually do a, a good block. So anybody can actually do that. So visibility is fine. But what about uh, the... Uh, you know, let's move on to here. So you see that that's the distance between the probe and the thing. It's it's very very shallow. It's just it's not much of a problem. But look at this. Okay, this is a morbidly obese patient. Look at the amount of fat there. Okay, let's actually watch the video and see how we do the block. So again, uh, that is the lateral side. That's a medial side. You can actually see the uh, artery pulsating. There's a femoral nerve there. And that's all fat. You know, this is all fat, different levels of fat. You can actually see in layers, the fat in layers. And look at the angle of the needle. It's uh, coming at a very, very acute angle. So the, the angle between the pro is is actually uh, pretty uh, obtuse, actually not acute. It's obtuse. Uh, so if this angle is more than 60 degrees, so even this is a high visibility needle, and despite actually using that, it's not easy to actually uh, visualize uh, uh, the uh, tip of the uh, needle at times. And you have to keep maneuvering the probe uh, to actually get a good uh, visual of the tip. And so you need someone to hold that fat, okay, it should not be coming in the, in the way. And uh, also, uh, make sure that area is clean. So uh, you will need a lot of manipulation during the, uh, you know, the uh, block itself. So that uh, uh, takes us through the femoral nerve. Now, what about sciatic nerve? Now, you cannot do this block with patient lying supine. Okay. Neither can you actually do the Raj approach, somebody holding the leg. It will be too heavy to do that. Okay, so best approach for a uh, sciatic block is actually having the patient uh, lying on the side. And uh, it's probably preferable to actually let the patient position themselves and do the block awake. And uh, this is also a good block if you're doing a, a block, uh, which is the serratus anterior plane block or SAP block as well. Uh, this is just to show that this is obviously done at the back. And this is how you, you do not actually remain face, uh, you know, at the, facing the back. You actually go facing the patient. So you are on the other side, the machine is facing the back, and you actually come in uh, from that. This is ergonomically possible, whether you're doing the uh, uh, proximal approach to the uh, sciatic, that is subgluteal uh, approach, or you're doing the popliteal fossa approach. You need to be on the other side. That gives you a lot more maneuverability and control over the probe. Do not stand on these, on the uh, back side, facing the back. Okay. Always face the patient in these uh, cases. Makes it easier. The uh, you can see that what happens uh, when you actually have patient on the lateral position where the uh, the hip is flexed, or uh, you know the leg is flexed at the hip. It not only squashes the fat, but it also actually thins out the muscle because it gets stretched. As it gets stretched, it, it actually becomes, the nerve will be closer to the skin. So that is uh, a good uh, way of, of doing doing that. Okay. Let's see if this is a video of that here. So you can actually see that. So that is uh, the, again, that's the uh, lateral side. Okay. And that's the medial side. 
and that's your uh, the that triangular space that is your sciatic uh, sciatic nerve this is the gluteal muscle and uh, it's easier i think this is just a video uh, of the of the uh, sciatic nerve area okay so yeah so that that triangle structure that is that is your sciatic sciatic nerve uh, here you can use extreme sim position where the patient is uh, lying uh, prone. Uh, if you want to use that, you can use that position as well. But most of the time, it's the little position is uh, uh, most appropriate. Again, this uh, approach is also good for the popliteal fossa as well. And uh, they can actually see the, uh, this is this is actually a popliteal fossa. I can show you the video. Um, and here, this is the your muscles. And uh, this is the amount of fat in a thin patient. Whereas this is the amount of fat in uh, obese patient, but saying that uh, popliteal fossa is probably a easiest uh, block to actually do in a patient uh, uh, who in a, in a morbidly obese patient, um, it's not that that difficult. Uh, I mean, uh, popliteal fossa, most people anyway think that it's not an easy block, but again, it is not difficult. But so that's that's the amount of fat you're actually seeing here. Okay, that's the fat. The needle is coming, so that's uh, from the little side coming uh, from uh, your bicep femoris muscle. That's that's the nerve there, and uh, I mean we're not talking about blocks as such, so I'm not going to go into details of the blocks. Uh, that will be trying to actually inject uh, local anesthetic through the uh, uh, perineural uh, sheet, uh, trying to do that. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, it's just uh, showing the spread here. Why? Okay, yeah. So it's not difficult. Then next is the regional anesthesia for abdomen. Now I think the commonest block which people find difficult is the tab block. Now doing tab block in a morbidly obese patient who is lying supine can be a problem. So <clears throat> how do we? Uh, sort this problem out uh, again uh, there are uh, multiple uh, issues so look at the amount of fat of fat okay like i said the fat you need to create space for it right. fat you can uh, squeeze it you can squash it you can displace it so that's what we're going to do we are going to actually create the space so one way to do is actually you can till the till the table okay and the fat will move away from them. But they obviously, you have to be careful. You do not want the patient sliding off the table. Right? Oh, so you need, need quite a few people actually on the other side so that the patient doesn't fall off. Or the patient might actually have the sense of feeling off, so you don't, don't want to do. But this is one of the ways. You can actually give a slight tilt and ask somebody to actually then move the fat away as well. So you have a fat controller who's moving the fat away from the body. So slight tilt and fat controller is one way. Okay, that will actually create a space. The other thing is that you can actually put a wedge on this side. Okay, like you put it for the uh, obstetric cases. You can use a wedge and uh, you actually that also will tilt the body. The uh, table is flat, so less chances of patient falling off. That can also be used. Or the other way is to actually just tilt the patient completely. So table is flat. You ask the patient to lie on the side. The fat will just flow away. Okay, so you put the patient. The same thing can be used in, in uh, pregnant ladies as well. And uh, you actually can approach the patient. The the uh, block can be done, done from either side. So you can either actually have the be on the facing the patient, or you can actually have the machine on the side. So you can approach it from anterior to posterior, posterior to entry. It really doesn't matter uh, when you're actually doing the block. So, but if you're approaching from anterior to posterior, advantage is that you can actually do a more of a posterior tap, which is actually more uh, effective than the anterior tap. Uh, neuroaxial blocks, um, the ultrasound is the best of the friends for uh, for these. Okay, you, for that, you actually have to also learn uh, what views you're going to use. Uh, it's a complete uh, topic on its own. Uh, uh, but what we do for these patients is that we actually mark the center. Okay, so 
what you do, uh, you actually put the probe transversely and uh, you actually look at the spine, you mark it and uh, you do it at a different level. Uh, you can actually look at, so you can actually mark the spine at, at various levels. Uh, you're not actually going to do a real time. What are you looking at is to making sure uh, where the center is and then you will actually do as you would do a normal uh, spinal anesthesia. Uh, it is no different from uh, doing, uh, well, some people will actually uh, just go for it. So if you can actually feel this point, then that's fine. But if you can't feel this point, then in that case, you can use use a, a, a covalinear probe and mark the center. I would say here, if we only show on one level, I would say that, that you do it at uh, multiple levels. Do it at least two, three levels. Uh, uh, you know, rather than just one one level. Uh, so in, in summary, uh, we're coming to the end of the lecture. Uh, remember that you need a good machine. Uh, you need to have probes. Either you actually have linear, lower frequency probe, like five to 10 megahertz. Normally that's, they are what higher frequency linear probes, eight to 13 megahertz, uh, which don't allow you to go beyond uh, six centimeters depth. But a 5 to 10 megahertz linear probe will allow you to go to almost 9 centimeters. And uh, you can actually have a curvilinear probes. <clears throat> you might require high visibility needles, and especially if you're going at deeper structure. So actually keep those, especially for these patients, uh, longer needles as well. Uh, the tricks which I have actually uh, you know, shown you, try to create space okay, by uh, positioning the patient appropriately. Uh, for upper limb, uh, use a uh, you know ramp. Uh, if you don't have a ramp, just use uh, two or three pillows. Make the patient almost uh, you know slightly sitting up as well. So you can use combination of slight uh, head up tilt as well as uh, a number of pillows to ramp the position. Uh, fat you know is can be squashed, so you can actually have somebody to control the fat, move the fat out of the way, uh, or you can displace it by actually giving a tilt. Uh, or uh, putting a putting a ramp, uh, sorry, putting a wedge under that. So it's all about creating space where you can actually get to the probe. So it's combination of all. So it's using common sense and nothing uh, very very particular. Okay. And obviously, you can actually uh, put the cushions on. And uh, thank you. Uh, with this, we will end the uh, video and go back to the lecture uh, i mean discussions wow, wow.